A very warm welcome to Issues at Hand this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of Church of Uganda Family TV. My name is Karen Owamani here to bring you Issues at Hand, issues that relate to us communally, spiritually, educational, inspirational, but also political and economical. Today we are going to discuss some of the issues, but before I do that, I'd like to remind you that Protea Hotel by Mario Tentebe is our sponsor and they do have everything you will need for relaxation and of course uh, your enjoyment as a person you know in our free time of course we have to enjoy our lives and Protea Hotel by Marriott is such a place where you can go and find all the lux luxurious things that you have on your list they also have a sleep in in case you want to spend a night with your friends and family it is Protea Hotel by Marriott and Tebe now let's get into our discussion for the day today we are discussing about the National Identification uh, and Registration Authority of Uganda of course we know that NIRA is the registration body of Uganda but we want to understand deeply what exactly is NIRA what do they do what is their mandate but also as a person as a Ugandan how are you supposed to be you know registered when are you supposed to register what are you qualified for are you qualified for a national id which ages qualify for national ids how about birth certificates and uh, also how about the persons with disabilities do they get uh, identification ids or anything like that does nira cater for all those people this is what we're going to find out today with my guest in studio today his name is Bahemuka john toa and he's the manager compliant and enforcement from nira you're welcome to the show thank you so much for being with us today yeah, thank you and uh, good morning viewers. Mm. I'm glad to be here to talk, talk about NIRA and share what uh, we do mm. and how you can benefit from our services. Thank you. Now let's start with uh, NIRA's mandate. Do you have any idea or can you paint a picture for our viewer what NIRA's mandate is? Yeah, uh, NIRA was uh, established by an act of parliament that is the Registration of Persons Act 2015 mm. and its core mandate is uh, uh, enshrined under Section 5 of the Registration of Persons Act, uh, among others include to create, maintain, and operationalize what they call the National Identification Register. Mm -hmm. So this National Identification Register contains uh, it's a register of persons who qualify to be registered in Uganda, mm -hmm. and uh, in so doing, we have a mandate to register citizens mm -hmm. and assign them and national identification numbers we have the mandate to register aliens and by aliens we mean persons lawfully non-nationals lawfully residing in the country mm. and we issue them with alien identification numbers we have the mandate to register births all births occurring in the country mm. we also have the mandate to register all deaths occurring in the country and uh, also we update information the register we share collect information in the national identification register uh, with other entities so by and large uh, but for specifically this uh, interest of this discussion our core mandate is to register all births mm -hmm. that occur in the country and uh, that mandate is uh, strengthened by the constitution article 18 that says that the state shall register all births and deaths that uh, occur in the country. Mm. So we really we're a registration entity and uh, in simply put, we register persons in the country. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Now, is it important to be identified? I'm sure there's some of our viewers who have never thought of registering themselves, especially to get a national ID. And they've been dodging it here and there, maybe because they don't know the heftiness or the importance of uh, registering. So is it important to be identified as a Ugandan? Um, it is, first and foremost, your duty to register as a Ugandan. The law that... Uh, that uh, establishes the National Identification Registration Authority and the law that governs our operations puts it as a compulsory duty of a Ugandan mm. that you must register yourself. So it is not uh, at your discretion. Mm. If you are a citizen of this country, you must register. If you are a non-citizen but lawfully residing in the country, you must register. So uh, the first rule is that registration is compulsory, free and compulsory. Um, 
uh, you may ask yourself, what is in it for me to register as a citizen? Uh, the very law that, I, that I'll continue speaking about, the Registration of Persons Act, uh, provides for services to be provided for upon production of this card. Under Section 66 of the Registration of Persons Act, um, every MDA, that is ministry, agency, or government, or any entity uh, that is interfacing with a citizen or a non-citizen, the person is, is obliged to produce uh, a card before receiving the services. The services in that are listed in that provision include employment, uh, voting, uh, voting purposes, passport purposes, driving license purposes, ba opening bank accounts, you need a national identification uh, uh, number on in uh, for you to uh, conduct transactions, land transfer, um, you need to present a national identification number or card for you to uh, access pension or social security benefits. You need to have your national identification number or card for you to 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 pay taxes. You need to be identified with your NIN or NID. Uh, so there's really a host of uh, of services mm. that require you to, to produce that number or card before you access the service. And basically, the, the whole point is really for verification and identification of the person before uh, 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 the service is given to that person. Okay. It is not intended. To 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 do anything else other than the person being identified and verified as the categorization of identity given by the act. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think let's get to birth registration. What is birth registration, and at what point or at what age should a child be registered, or is a child required to be registered? Yeah. Um, Birth registration, simply put, is uh, registering the event, the occurrence of the birth mm. at, the, at the time it occurred. And uh, we have two forms of birth registration. We, have, we recognize that uh, birth can occur in the community and also in a health facility. Mm -hmm. uh, for the case of Uganda, majority of the birth actually occur in a health facility. So the the registration is that that event that has taken place of the birth of the child registered in the national identification register um at what point at what age should a child be registered the law says immediately the event occurs register that birth and the beauty about uganda is that we don't only stop at registering the birth. We go ahead and issue an identification number to a child. A national identification number, according to our law, is issued to a child upon registration of that birth. So uh, just to demystify uh, the notion that we only identify persons when they reach a particular age, no. Under our law, upon registration of the event of birth, the child is identified and issued a national identification number. That number is yours for life. Your entire life, that number is what uniquely identifies you from me and you. So birth registration occurs at immediately the event occurs. Uh, the, 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 the hospital, if the birth occurs in a health facility, the in charge of the health facility is required to notify NIRA about the birth, and then NIRA turns that notification into registration. If the birth occurs in a health facility, the parents um, are, are by law required to notify NIRA uh, about the event of the birth, and then uh, the particulars are taken, and um, a NIN is issued upon uh, registration of the child. So um, if you happen to be in a health facility and you've given birth to a child, please, uh, parents, ensure that the health facility notifies NIRA about that birth. And then uh, we will proceed to register the birth and issue a national identification number. We always encourage mothers during the period of uh, their nine-month uh, um, um, 
period, pregnancy period, they take it upon themselves to, first of all, identify themselves. Because one of the requirements for birth registration of nationals is that you'll be required to have your parents' national ID. This is because identity as a citizen goes with your origin. And uh, for us, as a, can as a country, our laws, you can acquire citizenship by birth. And by birth does not mean being born in the country. By birth means uh, your place of origin. And that is derived from your parents or grandparents. Mm -hmm. So as a mother who is expecting and is not yet identified, we encourage mothers to get uh, IDs during that time, such that by the time they give birth, they have the complete documentation, have complete information that would, necess that would allow their children to be registered, uh, for the birth to be registered, and the children to be uh, given a national identification number. Okay. We all have uh, places where we come from. For example, villages and uh, ancestral homes, basically. And in these homes, uh, some, we have some people who are maybe less advantaged or less privileged and they get to give birth not in the hospital. So in cases where somebody has given birth but not in a hospital or health facility, then what do they do to yeah. acquire a birth certificate or to register as a new birth? Yes. Mm. Uh, so that, that category of persons are of, of that scenario, uh, we refer them to as community births. So births that don't happen in a health facility. Mm. And uh, by law, uh, the parents are obliged to uh, take steps to have those children registered. Our practice is that uh, one, we have a form, uh, a form three that the, the, the parents would fill in and then would require um, the LC, one of, of the area, to introduce uh, the, the, the persons uh, from that area and then that information is submitted uh, to the NERA registration officer of that area of the, of the, of the area where the birth occurred. Uh, uh, the practice also is that uh, we have the birth notification records at the sub-counties uh, where our local government officials would uh, notify uh, NERA as government uh, representatives who are on the ground would be able to notify uh, the, the registration officer in that area about the births of a child. But importantly is that the parents must have uh, national identification IDs. Because, like I said, and I'll say this again, at NERA we start our identification process at birth. And so you're either registered as a citizen or a lawful resident non-citizen. So for you to be registered as a citizen, uh, you, we, you derive your citizenship from your parents or grandparents. So that documentation would facilitate the registration and subsequent issuance of a national identification number to a child. So for those in the community, you make use of your local leaders on the ground, your, your, uh, your um, parish chiefs, your town clerks, but importantly, the onus is on the parent to take steps to have the child registered. Yeah, so or, or guardian or person responsible for the welfare of the child. Mm -hmm. Yes. How about these people who did register at birth and they are already old, but uh, they would need a birth certificate uh, in some of their errands? Maybe they, they've gone, they're going out of the country or they're, they're going to, register to uh, ask for a job and they require a birth certificate. How do they, those people get birth certificates there? Yeah. Thank you. Um, First and foremost, like I said, the event of birth must be registered immediately it occurs. And it is a compulsory requirement by law. So for you to turn up when you're 26 and ask for a birth certificate, you're already in a breach of the law. Because it is the, the birth registration uh, system began long time ago. Before even NERA came into existence, birth registration was being done by the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Um, so you were, and we had laws that governed birth registration at that time. 
if you recall, there was a time when um, there was the, there was a notion of short birth certificates being issued at uh, sub counties. Mm. So there was a system in place where you um, you were obliged and mandated to register that birth. That notwithstanding, um, the, of course, the law now recognizes for that late registration. Uh, you, f what, what we require right now at NERA is that uh, we first need to get that event of birth registered. So you go back to the health facility where you uh, uh, we are given birth from and get the notification record from that health facility because uh, that is if you are born in a health facility. So, uh, and then you attach, of course, your identification documents because, like I said earlier, uh, for our birth regist registration goes hand in hand with identification. So you also must have a NIN, a national registration number. So once you have the, that documentation from your health facility where you are born uh, and your national identification uh, uh, card, you pay a fee of 5,000 shillings for the birth certificate, and then uh, you present them to a nearest nearer office uh, to you, and then your birth certificate shall be processed. Mm -hmm. But we are moving to discourage late birth registration. The, uh, uh, you will not want to get into a scenario where NERA would close that window for late birth registration because we have people who are, who are 70 years old and they need a birth certificate, really. Mm -hmm. it, it, it does not... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they, they, we must maintain the sanctity of the National Identification Register by having the events registered on time as required by the law. Okay. Let's get to the national ID itself. Uh, one of the things I would like to understand is, or even our viewer out there want <coughs> wants to understand, the critical difference between a NIN and a national ID. Yeah. Um, the NIN, one of the critical mandates that we have under Section 5 of the uh, Registration of Persons Act is to assign the unique national identification number. And a NIN is at the heart, for our case of Uganda, a NIN is at the heart of identity. It is what legally identifies me as John Toa Bahemuka, mm. as opposed to another, maybe John Toa Bahemuka. Because you will be surprised as to how many people we have in the register that share with you the same names. The same two names. The same two names. Mm. So it is a mechanism um, that scientifically uh, a combination of both your bio data and biometric features that now after that generation gives you a number that is unique to you and it is only to you in the millions of Ugandans that national identification number is unique and only yours. That once issued to you upon registration of a birth shall only be rested upon your unfortunate demise. So you carry it, you carry it along your lifeline. And the NIN is simply a representation of information about you. Mm. Uh, whereas the national identification card is just uh, a document that has information about uh, what is in the register about yourself. Mm. And it's really basic information. The details of information is in the register, but the card is simply a rep representation of information about the, 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 the NIN holder. So the NIN is issued to everyone upon registration from birth. However, for purposes of identification, a card, you will only, uh, only be given a card upon attaining the age of 16 years of age. So there is nothing peculiar about one not having a card and not having a NIN because the most important uh, um, feature or 
what we issue is the NIN. The card, for transactional purposes, we all know that for you, that card can be used as a travel document within the East African region. Uh, that card identifies you when you're going to receive some services. Uh, for instance, services that require a particular age of people. If it's voting, you know voting is only uh, permitted for persons who are above 18 years of age. So that card would be, would, would be uh, evidence of you uh, at that particular point in time when you're going to vote mm -hmm. uh, to show that you're 18 years of age. Although we give it at 16 years of age, but uh, it is that at that point, your features have developed for you to uh, have your card. And we update that information every time we get an opportunity to interact with you. Okay. Um, what I would ask next would be replacement of these IDs. What's the process of replacement and why do we have to incur 50,000 shillings? Yes. Um, replacement, first and foremost, that card is given to you free of charge. Initial registration is free of charge. The card given to you at first time registration is free of charge. So the idea is that you'll, ho you'll keep it safe. And the payment is simply just to replace that which you have lost, that which government gave you free of charge. Because mm -hmm. they had incurred a cost at the, at the initial stage, they provided to you that, that card. Mm -hmm. So really, the cost is to replace what was given to you free of charge. Mm -hmm. And uh, the process of replacement is simple. If you lost your national ID card, you just have to present a letter from the police uh, reporting the loss. Mm -hmm. You pay the 50,000 shillings in the bank and not to any of officers because that is uh, uh, government revenue to Uganda Revenue Authority in any bank. So you present that uh, police letter and evidence of payment of 50,000 shillings. Then you fill in a replacement form that you can get online on our website and then you present it to any nearer office. There is, people uh, always ask that why do we have to go and replace our cards from the, from the offices where we registered. No, you can replace your national ID card from any office, any nearer office next to you. The difference is that upon the printing of the new card, it shall be taken back to that office where you uh, applied for the replacement from. So whether if, you're, if, you, if your initial application was in Rukunjiri mm -hmm. and you're now in Kampala or you're now in Masaka and your ID got lost in Masaka and you're staying in Masaka, just go to, you don't have to go back to Rukunjiri. You go to the nearest office in Masaka with the requirements that I've mentioned and the, uh, the replacement shall be done from there and the card shall be taken to Masaka for you to pick. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And uh, th the people in the diaspora, what's their registration process if somebody is out of the country and they need a national ID? Yes, they are Ugandan, but maybe their national ID, first of all, got lost, or they even didn't register for one and they need one. Yes. Um, we'll go back. Yes, we have also a duty to register citizens outside the country. And... Uh, to that extent, NIRA has uh, um, set up registration points at select missions abroad. Mm. Under the law, uh, it classifies and categorizes missions in Uganda as registration centers. So we have um, uh, established registration centers in fulfillment and compliance of that provision of the law uh, in uh, a few missions that is uh in nairobi in south africa a mission in south africa in united arab emirates uae in abu dhabi we have in washington in new york we have in canada we have in berlin german we have in australia so uh those are the missions uh, that we also have in uh in brussels uh, and plans are, 
underway to set up in a few other other missions. Mm. So persons who are there should present themselves to those missions. The way the registration system works is that you you need to physically present yourself for capture of your biometrics. So um, because your biometric, your fingerprints, uh, your face need to capture need to be captured from your physical pa person. So it cannot be, for now, it cannot be done online. It requires your physical presence. So persons in the diaspora in those countries can go to those, to our missions in those places and register. Um, the data is, of course, it is processed centrally, but the cards are taken back to those missions to be collected from there. Yes. We live in a, a world where, of course, there are some people who are less advantage than others and these are the PWDs, the persons with disabilities and I'd just like to understand where do they stand in all this? Can they also be registered? Do they receive the same services as other people and uh, what's, their, what's the process you go through to identify them? Yeah, we recognize that Nira's role is a role that is all encompassing. We register all persons regardless of their physical disability. We are mandated to do that. So all our processes takes into consideration persons with disabilities. And even, and that is in compliance with our provisions of the, of the law. We do not discriminate against persons with disabilities or any form of, uh, of physical or otherwise uh, features of a person that would not enable them be registered and be given a NIN. Mm. Uh, and we have, there are different types of disability. If you, if you, on our registration form, we even, there is a, there is a clear um, section where a person should uh, tell us, inform us of their disability that information is recorded in the register, but we go ahead and capture them based on how they are. Because it is not their fault that they are that way. And we have made these laws saying that every person must register, so we must, as the entity, mm -hmm. go ahead and execute our duty to that effect. So we register them, regardless of their disability. We, uh, those whose biometrics can be taken, we take. Those whose biometrics cannot be taken, we take, and also indicate it very clearly in assessing that this person is disabled. We, we have deliberately taken services to those people where they are because of their, of their, of their physical inabilities. Mm -hmm. We have taken services closer to them. We always have outreaches the for the disability, the elderly. We worked with the organizations of, of groups of those categories of people to have uh, to give them special services. Uh, we we do recognize that even the elderly, most of them have worn out fingerprints, and yet fingerprints are one f a key biometric feature for us to be captured. But we recognize that and also proceed to register those who fingerprints cannot be read because we have that legal duty to identify them. And we had indeed have in our register persons whose fingerprints cannot be read but have been issued with national identification numbers. Um, the plan, however, is to, because we, we execute the mandate using technology and technology evolves. So uh, there is emerging technology to capture other types of biometrics that right now we do not have, and that is the iris. So if we have various biometric uh, mechanisms of capturing other types of biometric features, the better. So we are moving to, to, to enhance our system, to in, uh, enhance the biometric features that we, we, we capture from persons whom we are registering, so as to have a wide latitude of uh, biometric features that we can, we can uh, capture. So that we don't want to leave anyone 
okay. behind. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And uh, these are national IDs that uh, you are usually given to us, they have an expiry date. And uh, one would wonder why a national ID expires, yet the person is still the same. Yes. Mm. So, like I had earlier mentioned, when you asked me about the, the difference between the NIN and the card, the card is simply representation of information that we, ha that we have in the system, that we hold on the system. The National Identification Card, like I mentioned earlier, is also a travel document. Mm -hmm. But from a legal point of view, it is very clear. It says that the, uh, the National Identification your citizenship does not expire and your citizenship is evidenced by your NIN which you hold throughout your lifetime. So your NIN which is prima, prima facie evidence of your citizenship doesn't expire. But the card, because one, it is used as, it has uh, security features on it that degenerate over time. If you look at your original national ID card, it has security features um, that after usage for a period of time, they degenerate. This very card that you, you have is used as a travel document. The ICAO, International Air uh, Travel Rules, uh, state that, the, that a travel document, air travel document must be renewed and they set periods for renewal. Because we, your, 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 your face is an identifier in travel, you must be renewed. You don't look the same way you looked 10 years ago. So for that reason, we must renew that card. Uh, that document in itself, at the end of 10 years time, we must comply with that that requirement that we must have it renewed. So the renewal is just to the extent of the card, the physical card, but not you, identity as a citizen, duly registered and assigned a NIN by the country. So it has nothing to do with citizenship. The only difference is that we use it as a travel document and also it has security features that degenerate over time and therefore cannot be used in transacting a business or, s or for services that I, that I stated earlier that you would be able to enjoy uh, if you present the same. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about the death certificate and who is supposed to get it in case somebody dies. Is it that uh, the wife is the one who is supposed to get in case her husband dies? Is it the husband to get the death certificate in case the wife dies? Who is responsible for the death certificate and when is it issued? Yes. Um, about death, first of all, the registration of death is also compulsory. And the law says the death must be registered immediately or not more than three months after the occurrence of the death. So we have same in the law under Section 43 of the Registration of Persons Act, the duty to notify the, the death. So there is a um, clear requirement and obligation to persons listed there. First and foremost, uh, I want to make it clear that the duty of NERA is to register the death and issue the relevant certificate. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not mandated to go beyond that, that role that we play in registering that event and issuing the, docu the, the document of that death. In the law, uh, it says the next of kin or person present uh, at, uh, present at the death of the person would notify the death to Nira. So it follows that criteria. If, if um, next, of, next of kin 
or the uh, person present is not there, the person uh, who is in the uh, premises where the death occurred. So it goes on and on giving a criteria and listing persons who would be able to notify. So it's the persons who notify the death whom we would ordinarily give the documentation to. So, and the registration of the event of death, it follows with what I mentioned about the birth. If the death occurred in a health facility, it is the in charge of the health facility to notify. If it occurred in the community, it goes back to the next of you know the person present in the dwelling where it occurred, and uh, or the owner of the premises where the death occurred. So ours is to register the event, issue the appropriate documentation to the persons listed in the law, and then whatever happens beyond that, it's for a different agency, whether administrator general or courts of law, to determine. Uh, because that always comes to us, and uh, uh, for us, we say our stops at registering and giving the documents to the person who are listed by law on our, on our side. We are not anywhere uh, into w the administration of the estate of the deceased. Mm -hmm. That is a different entity. Uh, government agency handles that, and they have their their procedures that they they follow all right maybe lastly before we take a short break do you think uh, that ugandans have been responsive when it comes to registering for national ids um yes to from our point of view we from our current statistics we have uh about 26.7 million Ugandans who have been identified with national identification numbers. Mm -hmm. And going by the UBOS estimates of uh, the population uh, of Uganda being at 40 million, first, uh, it's about 66% of Ugandans. So we have that. So to, if we are to, 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 if I'd answer you from uh, uh, a statistical point of view, mm -hmm. We are at about 66% of Ugandans are responsive. We have that other critical 34% uh, whom we want to register, to identify and give the appropriate identification numbers. And that is what the ID Identity Day 16th of September is all about creating awareness that all Ugandans by 2030 must be legally identified. It was a standard set by the United Nations under sustainable, Devol sustainable development goal number 16.9 yeah. that by 2030 all persons in the world must be legally identified. So we have about seven years to, to, to do that. But for us in Uganda, we want to do that in the next, two, in the next one year. Mm -hmm. uh, the plans that we have are to carry out another mass enrollment, uh, second mass enrollment after the one we, held, we had in 2014, to register these remaining Ugandans. And that once we register those who did not get the opportunity to register in 2014 or have never registered even after NERA was established to continuously register, they should take the opportunity and register. The plan is that once we cover that, we then strengthen registration at birth. We now pick you from the time your birth occurs. In so doing, there will be no gap. Right now, we're trying to catch up. And it's not only in Uganda. Actually, registration rates in Uganda, I think we are, we are the second highest in Africa. Uganda is the second highest in Africa to have persons identified at 66%. But that's not good enough. Mm. We must have it at 100% because uh, we, where the world is moving now, you cannot do without legal identity. The world is, mo is turning out to be a global village. And the way we connect, the way the world is connecting, the world is now connecting through identity 
through legal identity, through your NIN. That is why you, if you want now to transact any business anywhere in the world, most, most often they'll ask you for that unique identification number because the person who's transacting with you in, for instance, China, will be very sure that you actually exist. You're not a ghost, you're there. So uh, the, 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 the drive of the United Nations is that by 2030, and this has been, was brought um, at far by COVID. In COVID, when, we, when the lockdown happened, the world needed to move on, you know? We needed to, to, things changed all of a sudden. From physical meetings, online meetings became, became the thing to embrace. Even when COVID, will not say ended, but even when it went down and we are now ad adopting, adapting to live with it, the online meetings still go on. But behind that online, who's there? How do you authenticate a person who is behind that? You know? So things have changed. Digital transformation is taking over the world. And we cannot sit behind when the world is moving very fast. And at the heart of that is identification. So um, that's why we are saying we need to have every Ugandan registered in the coming exercise that we are planning for we will have we're going to enhance our systems to catch up with the latest technologies in the id systems we're going to enhance our national identification cards and also uh, enhance biometric features that we have all in a bit to catch up with uh, the moving ident identity ecosystems everywhere in the world and once we get everyone in the register, we'll then close the gate and then have our registrations strengthened at birth okay. in the community and in the health facility. That once a birth occurs, immediately we have it registered and we have a person assigned a NIN. In so doing, we'll, we'll definitely be aligning ourselves with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you. Uh, let's take a very short break, but we still have a lot to talk about. I hope you've learned a thing or two and that you've uh, known that registering yourself is very, very important. And especially if the, for those of you who haven't registered, uh, there, there are those of you who are waiting for replacement. It's 50,000 as you have had, and that money goes as revenue to the government of Uganda. And uh, right now, my name is Carol. We shall take a short break and return more shortly. We are powered by Protea Hotel by Mario Tentebe. Don't go away. Welcome back to Issues at Hand. Thank you so much for being a part of Church of Uganda Family TV. The conversation is ongoing on our social media <coughs> platforms. That's at Church of Uganda Family TV, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube, where we post these subsequent videos so you can go watch and comment on them. We're still discussing uh, registration and uh, identification, and we are with our guest today. His name is Bahemuka John Toa, the Manager Compliance and Enforcement at National Identification and Registration Authority, the body that registers as Ugandans uh, with uh, the issue uh, birth certificates, death certificates, but also national IDs, and we are here to discuss that in detail. There is an IID campaign that calls for recognition of September 16th as an International Identity Day in tribute to UN Sustainable Development Goal number 16.9, which calls for legal identity for all by 2030. Now, the purpose of this day is to raise awareness about the important role identity plays in empowering individuals to exercise their rights and responsibilities fairly and equitably in a modern society. That is what we're discussing today, and uh, uh, John is going to tell us more about this day and the preparations to celebrate it yeah um for the id day like i said first of all this uh, just the background to this is that uh, uh african countries have come together through what they call id for africa movement mm. to 
uh, advocate for identity for all, legal identity for all at birth by 2030. Mm -hmm. Because you recognize that by the estimates of the World Bank, there are about 1.1 billion persons worldwide who are not legally identified. And of this, they estimate that 81% uh, of those come from Africa and South Asia. So uh, through the ID for Africa movement, the 16th September was um, identified as a day to promote awareness, to remember that we Africans are not yet embraced 100% legal identification. Most of these systems uh, started just recently in, uh, in Africa. Uganda, we began in 2014, mm. like you know, but we have done well, mm -hmm. but we can still do more. Uh, so the day is just to create awareness. Awareness that you who has not registered, please come have your your yourself, your family registered for a national identification number and NIN. And in so doing, you'll be able to enjoy the benefits of registration. It is two way, both for this for the government and for the individual. For the government, for planning purposes, you know, will government would like to know how many persons are in the country, how many persons which is the most sparsely uh, or densely populated place, which place has the most children in so doing probably they would plan to have more uh, uh, medical health facilities in a particular area if there's a pandemic and you know because you all identified and you're registering these events of, of, of death uh, as they occur, it can be an indicator for government that hey there's a problem here where there's so many people dying from you know in this place uh, if it's a birth registration and you know we're having so many people registering in birth in a, a country X, a county X or district X, you know, government can then put their more resources in relation to, to support, you know, that. So, uh, yen, you, you as a citizen, to facilitate your transactions, if you're dealing with a pers person who's selling land, you know you're not, you're not dealing with the wrong person, you're dealing with the rightful owner of the land, you know, if it's, uh, if it's, uh, uh, if it's uh, you to access government services, for instance, uh, uh, social security services, search for the elderly, you know, you know that only the persons entitled, you know, not people who are, who are young and are uh, parading themselves as old people are getting what ideally should be, you know, should be yours. So the, the benefits for everyone. So the, the point is that like, we, we want to create this awareness that uh, persons take it upon themselves to present themselves for registration uh, with the correct documents and that uh, they can then be legally identified. Uh, also that uh, because services are now tied to persons um, presenting this identification number and document, we want also to move to the persons who may not be able physically, you know, to have their, their identity registered. So we want to have deliberate uh, drives to, uh, for inclusion and not to be seen to exclude people to their detriment. I uh, want to be seen to, uh, to be aware that even our processes, our technologies should meet the needs of those who uh, um, ordinarily are not benefiting as uh, uh, able citizens. So uh, this, this drive uh, for this particular purpose on the 15th and 16th of September, we'll be having uh, our registration uh, desks at the Constitutional Square for working clients. So if you have your IDs you need to replace, if you have your children uh, who have not been registered, uh, please bring them to the Consumer Square. If you have uh, your, your baths that you've never registered, please uh, come with those notifications and we have them registered. 
it's going to be a full package of NIRA services. If you ever registered and you don't know what happened to your registration, we shall be having information desks there that will give you real-time answers to, uh, to the queries that you'll be, you may have on your registration. Uh, so uh, the day really is about awareness and also providing the services closer. We are bringing the services to you. Uh, and you won't have to come to office, but you'll just come to the consumer square for two days. That is on Friday 15th and Saturday uh, 16th, which is actually recognized as the International ID, ID Day. But bo bottom line, this is really an awareness campaign that please come register. Registration is free. Registration is uh, mandatory and registration has benefits. Mm. Okay, thank you so much. I think we've come to the end of our show because of time. I don't know if you have any last words for our viewers. Yeah, the, my last words are that uh, uh, the viewers, please register the events when they occur. Uh, we have had instances where people after 40, 50 years want to change their date of birth. <laughs> and uh, all these is because at the time the event occurred, they were not registered. Mm. So we want to encourage parents. We want to encourage guardians. We want to encourage persons responsible for the welfare of children. Bring your children for registering. Immediately these events occur. It will save you from all these problems in the future. That you are given a wrong date of birth because a person wasn't sure of when you are born. We know that even we know that other people, not all, do it for ulterior motives, and that is an offence. Uh, uttering false documents, providing false information, is a personal offence under the Regional of Persons Act. Don't go there. Provide truthful and rightful information, but that can only be done if we embrace early registration. That can only be done. If, we, if the children uh, have their, their details registered early enough, we know that government is going to streamline most of these services on a provision of this NIN. At UNEB, a NIN is moving to be a requirement. Means of education, registration of learners, you need a NIN. So do it now. Don't do it later. I thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we thank you also for being a good audience today and thank you so much for participating in our social media, uh, on our social media platforms about this topic. Now we encourage you to continue the conversation. Our YouTube will, uh, our video will be posted on YouTube. We encourage you to go and follow the conversation right there. My name is Carol. Thank you so much for being a part of Issues at Hand. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a lovely day. We're powered by Pratea Hotel by Marriott and Tebe.